Okay. So the topic of tonight is why are kids always complaining that they need more and more attention and we feel that we give them more than enough? What do they want? Where is the mistake if there is a mistake? So in our world, you have to know many, many kids, they growing up with a feeling that they're missing. They feel not satisfied. And they feel that they never got something from you. Everybody owes them and they demanding more and more. Example, a child that have everything. Parents, they love him very much. A room full of games. And he knows, he feels secure that if he will need something, his parents will be there right away to supply it. And after all this, and even though he have all this, the child is still bitter. They never buy me anything. He believes in that. And he complaining. And the question is, why does he feel like that? What's the problem with it, shot? Why the fact that he has all the good in the world, he feels that he doesn't have anything. And we know. Ezer Washir, Asamir Bechelko, yeah, who is a rich person? A person he is Sameach with his share. So our kids today are not happy. So I assume that all of us, right? are aware of the situation, yes? Yes, Rabbi. All, yes. all the parents here, yes? Yes, yes, yes. Rabbi. Kafka, the child that gets the more most attention, he feels uh, less. Yes. You're giving your children, you're trying your best, and you're putting an effort to do everything for them because we all want to be perfect parents. But after all this, the kids are not appreciating like they should, what we're giving them. They continue to demand, to get angry at us and to believe that they are the only ones who would who do not have, all their friends have everything. They have nothing. And they're very upset with us, very upset. How can you explain such an absurd? How can we explain it? So now, the Western society taught us to put the child in the center of our life. To worry about the child. To consider it became one of the fundamental values of the society today. The more a parent gives to the child, 
That's how we value him to a good parents. He gives everything to his kids. And it got and he get to extend that sometimes the parents becoming like a slave to their kids. And then couldn't stop for a second to think how much this child needs Bakla. What is the price that we have to pay in order to satisfy this child's appetite? One day, not too long ago, a person was asking me, actually it was a lady, So she told me about her kids, you know, and they want very much to buy a dog to the house, that they need a dog. So she couldn't resist. So she said, if in, in the report card, I'm gonna see it and I'm gonna be happy with that. Okay, if the if the average will be 80 and up, I'll buy you the dog. So what he was what she was asking me, if it's okay to do such a deal with the kids. I was asking her. We, we spoke about it. And I found out from what she said to me that she hates dogs. She don't want the dog in her house. So I was asking her, why don't you ask me if you need Bechlal to buy the dog or not? So what she told me, this is not for discussion. I don't have a choice. The kids want it very much. Did you hear that? This conversation illustrated to me until when the parents are ready to give to the children everything. They think, they don't even think that they have also place to their wishes, the parents. Ima don't like dog, why she have to give in? Why the kids then cannot be considered to Ima's feelings. Why we always have to consider their feelings. And where is the respect to the parents? You're allowed to say, I don't want to bring dog into my house. You can do it. Even though you have the ability to buy, it's for sure, we can say we not buying a dog because we don't like it. We don't like it. So if we're sending a signal, even though we don't like it, we have to buy it for you. So what do you think the, feel, the kids feel? Tough luck if the parents don't want. We want. So we becoming the managers of the house. So we becoming like Meshuabad. You know what Meshuabad means? 
you are slave already to their requests. And we making ourselves like zeros, nothing. And also paying attention to your kids, what the society is saying now. Meaning to give attention to the child is, it's, it's fundamental base. And it's a value. And the parents must give it to the children. In this way, they said, the kids are going to appreciate it. And the kids will grow up happy and healthy and mentally healthy. We know that. But what kind of attention are we talking about? The line, the child will go up happier when he will get attention, everybody knows it. That's not news. Every parents know that and they want to achieve it. But we're making the mistake along the way. Where is the mistake? We feel obligated to the children to give them what they want. With no stoppage. So from the moment that the child is born, the parents are already under pressure with the obligation to give. to supply, to worry about his happiness. And every demand that he says, we are here. The child is going up right away. He, he hops. He knows that he, he deserves attention. He knows that his parents must fulfill his demands. And he demanded. He demands from the parents, from his friends, from everybody that surrounding him, he will always be in demand. And the parents, they, they don't say no. I would say that almost what, whatever the child wants, at the end, he will get it. So, Bermet, we were, People will think that the generation of today should be the most happier one. Kids who knows how to ask and how to receive. And you and you can see, we all know that, right? That Dafka in our generation, when the recognition that we have to give the children is so exposed. Everybody knows it. And it's publicized everywhere. The children are suffering from lack of attention more than any generation that we know. Isn't it absurd?
what our time, what we we got, and what they get in today. No comparison. Because in the world of today, the kids are not receiving what they really need. They need a truthful giving. This is called a truth attention, a pure attention. If the the if the giving is not going to be pure, and the attention will not be pure, the kids will believe that they don't have anything. Even though they have everything, they say we have nothing. So why the child saying, why is he complaining? I don't have anything. His room is full, everything is fine. His parents are there supplying whatever he needs, everything. And the, the child is a, I have nothing. Do you know why? Why is it? Is it because it's not genuine attention? No. When the child demand, when the child demand, he demands, he's asking, meaning, he is not receiving. He demanding, and because of his demands, we give him what he wants. When somebody demands something from you and you're giving it to him, this giving is nothing because you're just fulfilling his demand. He's not giving. You're fulfilling demands. That's what you're doing. Yes, the parents of this guy, this child that have everything, and Bermet, he have everything. Why does he feel that he have nothing? Because whatever his parents gave him was not spontaneous. He said, why don't I, why don't I have this toy? Okay, we'll buy you. Why don't, why don't I have a seller for? We'll buy you. Whatever he's asking, we're giving it to him. This is not attention. We're just fulfilling his appetite. That's all. We're not doing it from our effort. It's coming from him. So it gets into a routine. The child is asking, parents supplying, asking, supplying. And he says, from yourself, you didn't give me anything. It's only me, I'm the demander. And, and you are the supplier. But what coming spontaneous from us without the child asking us? Mm -hmm. Yes. So if we would initiate without the child asking us, the child would be ha happy and satisfied? Uh-huh. But can we give an example? Like the child wanted a dog. We're not getting a dog, let's say, because we don't like it. Yes. Um, so I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't do that because I don't want the dog. Yes. So what would I do instead? Meaning the, the child could always want everything. And, you know, they come home, I want what my friends have, or I want this. And we say, we don't do that. 
we could do something else. We could supplement with something else. Would that be a better idea to supplement? No good. So we should do it before they ask us. The moment that they start to demand is not attention anymore. So we have to be attuned to their needs before they express it. Exactly. Oh, yeah. But Rav, what if it's like um, something that they earn, that they work for? Let's say you have a reward system at home. And then whatever they're requesting as a reward is something you're not okay with. So you have to say in advance. Mm -hmm. What Everything if you don't know that, they're, that their mind would go thing. there? What? So what if you don't know if they, that their mind would go to certain places, like to certain things, or should you limit what they are allowed to No, do? we go on the limited if, okay, who, whoever will make the points, right? So we have four items that we want you to choose from. So it's then now coming up, out of the blue with something that you never thinking about it and it's a full surprise for you now right. and now he will say you don't know how to keep your words you see I made the, the point now you, you don't want to give it to me thank you Rav okay so now you remember what we spoke last night? Giving yes. and taking? Yes. Why it doesn't work? When you demand and the other side is doing what you demand, is not a relationship. It's a give and take. What coming from us spontaneous that you didn't even think about it. I just want to show you how good you are. That's attention. Meaning I'm paying attention to what you need. When I'm asking you, meaning you didn't pay attention. I have to bring to your attention that I need a toy. Did you get the point? Because kids are always looking for things. How are we supposed to know what they're thinking? Oh, like, so you don't pay attention. In Hebrew, we say tzum et lev, meaning your heart has to be there. If your heart is not there, so the other party will demand it from you. So, so honestly, yes. though, kids are ah. so demanding now. Cat, kids are so demanding nowadays, though. Meaning, like you could, you could be supplying them and supplying them, and you, you feel supplying like supplying them what they're asking for, not what you want to give them. No, but I'm saying you feel like you covered all bases, <laughs> like Sharona said. Like, how can you know when they're in need? I don't know. Maybe I'm just not understanding it. Wait. Let's go to the basic of it, okay? If you have a birthday, right? And you come to your friend and you tell her, if you're not gonna give me a nice present for my birthday, I'll be very disappointed. And she went and she bought you an, a nice gift. You think that you're going to appreciate it? Well, you kind of threatened her and telling her if you don't do it, I'm not going to be happy. Meaning you're demanding a gift. But if they're demanding, they wouldn't even do it. Like It's like a threatening in a way. If the friend will come on her own and said, you know, I think that in two days you're having a birthday. I will not be in town. So I know that you have a birthday in two days. Here is my gift. Which is better approach now? Who paid attention? A friend who's leaving in two days and not able to be there. She's 
But if you come in with the menu saying, you know, I have a birthday and if you're not going to give me a gift, I'll be very disappointed. Are you going to be excited? No, because you're anticipating it. But Rav, what if your child knows you get them a gift every year for their birthday, but they have a particular thing that they want and they're asking for it? How is that you not paying attention to them? Okay. Meaning so they, they want a Lego set, like they want a specific one. Let's say, but they know that you get a birthday gift every year. Meaning we're not yeah. neglecting that. I, I know. So why can't you say a month before? Moishele, you know, I know that in one month you're having a birthday. You are months in advance of that. The Abba and me, we're thinking all day long what to buy for you. Rav, my kid is five months in advance. <laughs> it's not normal. Okay. It's February. His birthday is in June. He's already talking about his gift today. All right, same one. I'm telling okay. you. <laughs> okay, so that they don't so even give you room he to like. You, he chose you. He chose you that how much attention we give, and it's a wrong one. Meaning you're so bad, you have to remind you six months in advance, right, to pay attention. I mean, I, I'm not boasting, but we really are. We do try our best with that. Like, I'm very surprised that it's translating into that. I just, I really genuinely feel that kids are of a different nature nowadays. Like, I wouldn't even move my teeth to ask my parents for a birthday gift. Okay, you is you. Now, what is attention? You see, according to you, maybe you can explain me what attention means. When you get un when you get undivided attention and the person is focused on you, no other distractions, no phones, just you, and that's it. And that's just like a husband and wife. Well, okay. So that's called at attention, yes? So now, why do you think kids making, making noise? They fighting, they don't want to do homework, but again, again, why they doing it? attention especially when you're on the phone Rob. that's when they they're... a child will do everything to draw attention i'm here i'm here hello somebody can look i'm here maybe he will throw he will throw attention he will bother he will instigate he'll get on your nerves just for us to pay attention to him. Or the opposite. Pitom will be a very good boy. He will be quiet. He will be, do his homework. Whatever you tell him, he'll, he'll go and listen. Why? Because he knows that will draw the attention that he needs. In any way, in any case, the child will create a situation that you willingly or forcefully will pay attention that is existing. Even kids, go ask a child, four years old, five years old, why your friend made such a balagan. You know what I tell you? Nice. He is looking for attention. Five years old. He wants to show himself. 
meaning the child is not getting attention. He is drawing attention. The moment that you have to draw attention, it's not going to work. So, what happened to us today? Today we have to deal with uh, a day that is so packed with so many things that we have to do. We all under pressure. We busy. We have a load, an investment, endless inside the house. You don't have a free time and not a calmness to give attention to to relate to every child and to give him the attention that he needs. A personal one. They right away they get it. And he, he is a good student and he said, if I'm not gonna take attention, I will never get at attention. If I will not demand, I will never get. Everybody will forget me. More than this, if I'll be a good boy, nobody will pay attention to me like I'm a piece of furniture because anyway, you're a good boy. So why should I be good? So why should I be good? He sees that the siblings, the more Baragan they doing, the more Ima is there all the time. So Ima gives them attention more than to the good ones. So why should I be a good one? Even a baby, he learns very fast that if he'll eat the battle very fast, what will happen uh, then? You ate, now you go to sleep, yes? But if you will not finish the battle, what will happen? You're gonna sing to him, you're gonna talk to him. In other words, you're gonna give him attention. So why should he finish the battle right away? He is also learning very fast to know that if he will cry right away, they're gonna run to him. And if he will keep quiet, he will be lonely. Nobody will pay attention to him. If this is the situation, so the child develop his own methods, how to draw attention, how to receive attention because it's a need for every person. He will do, he'll be ready to do everything to just to draw attention. Even on his sleep, he's ready to give up his sleep, he'll wake up in the middle of the night. Well, well, well. well go to sleep already. That's the only way I can get attention in this house. Because now mommy will come to me. He will develop difficulty in school. So his father have to sit with him and learn with him. Otherwise he will not see his father. He is ready to be sick even. To go to a doctor. Huh? So he will get attention from his parents. Even he's going to instigate 
get on your nerves and you're going to call him names and who knows what. He is ready to accept all this just to get the attention that he needs so much. I don't want you to, to get out of here from an outcome that that's what the kid is doing all day. Yes? No. The child, he doesn't know even why he's doing it. He by himself, if you ask him, why are you doing it? He will not know what to answer you. Because this is a need from the subconscious, I need attention. And he doesn't know how to explain it. Because he needs connection with his parents. So he understands that the only way to connect to, to the parents is to make a balagan, then they relate to me. So he understands that to get attention is to demand. So now, what happened inside the family? It can get to a place which is not good, not pleasant, not advisable, but Hlal no. On one side, the child stands there and he believes that his parents must give him, they're obligated to give him. And that justification that he get from where? From the parents, from the teachers. All the experts in Chinuch, psychology, they all say the child needs attention. How many times did you ask me a question? I said your child needs attention, right? Everybody knows it. But we were all sending signals to the child, you need attention. From the other side, standing the parents. They feel obligation to give and they give. How many parents went to Orlando this winter break? Okay, I see everybody, it's quiet, okay. How many after school programs you sending the kids? Toys, they own room, they own bed, they own whatever they want. And we have hopes to see the child happy and thanking us but the child, no thanks, no happy. And now we are in a trap that we don't know how to get out of it. He wants more and more and we supplying more and more. And he is not satisfied and we are helpless. We don't know what to do. The tension in the house rising and the parents already were, have no co-op for this. Until they said that's already too much, now they go to the other extreme. They don't wanna give him anything. So now everything will collapse. From Giving, 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 is a, that's what, what you're doing. Now the opposite from why it became black and everything will collapse. What happened to the system that we wanted to create, a basic one, full of love, 
and a good will to give, what happened? So we have to learn something and listen carefully now. In Hebrew, we say, whoever he is taking is not receiving. Is there a difference between taking and receiving? Yes. What's the difference? When you're receiving, you're taking, and when you're giving, you're giving it to someone else. What, what? When you're taking, someone's giving you something, but when you're giving, you're giving it to someone else. You're not getting anything. What's the difference between whoever takes is not a receiver? Whatever you take, you're taking. Whatever you receive, you get from somebody. You take it, you say, I got it myself. But it's in my hand, it can be two things. Either I got it as a gift without even me knowing that I'm getting it. Or I was demanding it and you supplied it to me. Isn't it the same? No, 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 no. One, you consider you didn't get it because you already get it yourself. No, I demanded it. You demanded it? You mean you got it yourself? That's why it's not count as a get. Yes. That's not called receiving. That's called taking. So we have a basic mistake in our understanding about the definition of giving and attention. Attention to the child is a gift that the parents will willingly giving the child without him even thinking about it. We initiated it, not he was initiating it. We initiated it. When the child demand and we supply, he will not be satisfied. Because we don't giving it to, to him with our free will. We're giving it to him just to supply his demand. Meaning he was the one to what? To cause us to give. If it's not him, we will not give it to him. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Yes. Who was the initiator over here for me to give the child? The child. So if it's not him, would I give it to him? No. no. So he doesn't see it as attention. He said, if I'm not asking you, you don't pay attention to what I need. So Rav, if he would have never asked for it, he would have never received it. Meaning he took from us. We didn't give it to him. There is a difference. So he forced us into giving him. Yes. Yes. Exactly. I quite have a question. What if the child is not demanding? The child is just telling you that he wants it. And then like you just, you know, That's sort of demanding. give it as a reward. That's demanding already. It's also demanding? Of course. So Rob, in other words, if a child requests, let's say like I went back to the birthday gift, 
and he wants something specific, then then that's a problem that we we did something wrong. No. Like he doesn't. Let's say he doesn't want a surprise. It, it, it doesn't need to be a surprise. According to you, six months in advance, you're gonna tell your child. You know, we're thinking already what to buy for you for your birthday in six months. Right, right. Which we did. We because we know how he is. He like. But you have to tell forward. him this. You have to tell him so he knows that you're paying attention to him, even though the birthday is in six months from now. Right. My parents this particular are thinking kid. about me. Right. That's so all attention. That's kid. all attention. But the quota, that's a question I had. Like you tell them in, in, in advance that this is what Abba and are planning to get you. And then you give it to him at the birthday, at the time of his birthday. Is that called demanding? If I'm six months in advance, I'm we, 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 telling him, you know, we're thinking what, what, what to buy for you. He got the gift already. What was the gift? My yeah, parents, they're thinking, they thinking about me. Their heart is with me, paying attention, meaning, seem live, live, live. Put your heart there. So, every Giving from our, any giving from our side that came because the demand of the child or asking of the child, the child seeing it as we don't pay attention. Because if we pay attention, it will come from us. The moment that he comes to us to ask or demand, meaning we didn't, we didn't pay attention to what he needs. Now you understand? So we have to do that with everything, Rev, when it comes to the children? That's called attention. Like offering to play with them instead of them coming to us and say, play with me. Should we ask them? Why? How do you, how you expect a child to feel the love of yours? Many times, right? Many times. The child said, I want this, I want this, I want this. So at the end they say, okay, oof. Here, take. Just go. How you think he feels? He that you gave it to him? He overwon you. No, no, no. But he, you, you gave it to him? Yeah, no. but he feels like a nuisance. Just get out of my way and take it. He took it from you. By force. By nudging you. That's not giving. So you don't give and the child do not receive it. The child took it. Meaning, a giving like that, are you paying tax to your child? What tax? Just keep. I'm ready to pay taxes. Just keep quiet. Because you want peace and quiet from your conscience. And you want peace and quiet from the peer pressure of the Surrounding, the child feels that he forced you to give. He sees that the way that you look with the tone of your voice. He understands that he took it from you after all the effort that he put, that he initiated it. And then he said, if I will not do this, I will never get what I want.
A child wants to feel that the parents love him. They think about him. He wants, he wants consideration from his parents to be noticeable. He wants to feel that the parents love him and important. But what does he feel that he is neglected? Even though you gave him what he wants at the end, but he feels I had to force it out of my mother. And he will continue to demand more and more. Why? He is hoping that at the end he will get, Ima will get the message to give me before I'll come to her. And the parents continue to give. Why? Because we're frustrated, we don't know what to do. We continue to give, not because we have a willing to give, because I, the child is demanding for me. And then we feel that we squeezed And I don't want to see this child, this nudnik. And many times we give, we give, we give, but it's not giving. The kids have to take it away from us. <laughs> giving when it comes with your own initiative. So the child feel, I, I didn't ask for all this. Ima were thinking about me. That's called attention. When you give something spontaneous without the other party even thinking about this, what's the message behind it? That you're thinking about me, I'm important to you. You're, you're important, important for me. You have a place in my heart. You love that person. That's what the child needs to, that's what he needs. What does it mean when we say in Hebrew, Sumet Lev, Sim, place, your heart. You have a place in my heart? Put your heart. No. When we say, the Gemara said, the eyes and the heart is tres sure de avera. These are two brokers for Averot. The eyes, they see, and, uh, and the heart now, looking all over how, how to achieve it. So the Torah tells you, sing live, put your heart, what my children, what they need, even without them, them thinking about it. And it goes the same thing, husband and wife. And the, that's why we say, I give, she's not appreciating, she's not appreciating, of course she's not appreciating, because she has to take it out of you by force. We got used to, Giving outside, everybody please see, you see, I'm giving. But where is the feelings behind it? So child have to feel and to know 
that we pay attention to him. Our heart is with him. We're listening to you. We sing you. We remember you. And he has to, to, to know that he is inside our heart. We know that he doesn't know. It's a basic thing. How many times are you asking your husband, do you love me? How many times? A lot. Do you care for me? Why are you asking? Why are you asking? Because you don't feel it. So if you're not asking, then that's good? So either you give up or you don't know how to express it or you are afraid even to express it. But what if you feel secure? Is that okay? Meaning like, and you don't ask. Oh, you're sure that he loves you. You don't have to ask. So your love tank is full. Your attention so, is full. So why can't you say to your husband, you know, I feel that you love me. You know, it's very nice of you. Why should you tell him? If you love me. You see it in his behavior and you're secure. But why don't you give him a compliment for crying out loud? Don't take nobody for granted. So now, many times you as a grown-ups, you want to test if your husband loves you or not. Yes or no? Yes. How many times you testing this man? We test him to see if they love, correct. Why? Because you, you don't see it. So why? And the kids are doing the same thing. So if the child knows that the parents been met, they love him, they care for him, they think about him. So his mind is not occupied with this. Now he can go outside and develop relationship with his friends. So if we pay attention, listen to what the child feels. He feels what? He is, he is belong over here. He is growing up in a family that they want him. They love him. They met. And the feeling that he's important and they appreciate him the way he is. That's it. That's called attention. That's quite a question. I'm so sorry to bother Rabbi. What if you do show all that and then just the child, for example, did something and need to punish the child now? The child knows that he has love and the attention. But How does he know? How does he know? Because you show them, you speak to them, you show them, you're always there for them. You try to secure them that whatever happens, Ima and Abba is always there for you. You shouldn't be scared to open up to us. That's why we're here. It's okay. And the child feels that love. He feels like he's secured. But it comes to the point where the child did something and you had, the child has to pay for certain thing. And when you punish, that's where the child starts having second thoughts. Oh, I was punished. So how does... Like he's sort of lost now. Like, what's now? Where am I standing? Am I in the page of where my parents love me, or am I being hatred now? How do you explain to the child that point? Don't forget the child. After all, he is a child. After all, right? Of course. And what you're saying, you know, I have to investigate exactly what you're telling him and what the. A child is not coming to react out of nowhere. There is something that will trigger it. Rob? Yes? Doesn't giving a consequence a child show that you care? Because if you didn't, then you would let him do everything and anything he wanted. Then I mean, Did I you say care that? About him. But if you're giving... 
you know, I'm asking, I'm asking, I'm not saying what I've said, but I'm asking, giving a consequence, <laughs> doesn't that show that you care about the child? Not that he's getting the attention in the wrong way, which makes sense. We'll get to it. We'll uh, get to it. Okay. Again, first of all, you have to understand the basic of what I'm saying. There is again, giving and there is taking. Is there a difference between giving and taking? Yes, giving, you're giving freely. Taking it, you're taking by force. That's all. So most of the toys that you have, most of the thing that you bought for your kids, okay, was given by you willingly or it came from the demand of the kids? That's what you have to think. Demand. Demand required. Now, so now you have one answer at least why the kids are not satisfied and not happy. Understand? Yes, Rev. To be continued. I'll see you tomorrow at one o'clock. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for that. Nice talking to you, you, as usual. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rav. Go to. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.